morning to you. I am back in the pulpit. It has been five long months, and so I greet you from St. Mark's United Church of Christ on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. It's August. Can you believe that it is August already? It seems like during this pandemic that time has sort of moved at a slower pace, but in other ways it seems like it's gone faster than ever. My name is Jennifer Jaimez and I serve St. Mark's United Church of Christ in Bloomington, Minnesota, and it's good to be with you this day. If this service feeds your spirit or offers you hope, I invite you to share this link with others. It can be found on St. Mark's Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel located under St. Mark's UCC Bloomington. Our website, S-T-M-A-R-K-S, uccmn.org, St. Mark's uccmn.org, also contains uh, the four most recent worship services as well as information about our church and some of our outreach that we participate in. We will be celebrating Holy Communion later on in the service, and so I invite you to have a piece of bread of some sort nearby in a cup with juice or water or coffee or tea, or if the spirit moves you, a bit of wine. If you do not have those nearby, you can pause this service, gather them, and then resume. It is a little warm in here, and so you might notice that I'm listening just a little bit, but it is good to be back in the sanctuary, and I pray that we might all be back worshiping together in person. But as of now, it is still the safest to be home. This morning I have two greetings to share with you. The first is from Pat Barger. I had a chance to visit with her on Tuesday with her daughter Lori and I wanted to make a video recording, a video greeting, but because she had to wear a mask, we all had to wear masks, and because of her soft voice, it would not have uh, shown on the video, but I have enclosed a picture of her and she looks good. She, of course, misses everyone at St. Mark's and wishes she could be here, just as we all do. I also have a greeting from Kirsten. Hi, St. Mark's. This is Kirsten. I am working a couple days a week. I miss you all. I miss church. But it was good to see everybody on Zoom on Sunday. Each Sunday, I hope to record a greeting from a member or friend of St. Mark's to share at the beginning of the worship service, and I'm able to come to you or we can meet here at church, so contact me soon to get on the schedule. With all of that being said, I invite you to take a breath in and a breath out so that we might prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day. If you have a bulletin, I invite you to join me in the call to worship, and if you do not, I invite you to hear these words. Feel the living presence of Christ. Dwell in the silence. Rise in the song. Live in the word. Be in the prayer. Feed at the table. For this is worship. Amen and Amen. Together let us join our voices in the opening hymn, Fairest Lord Jesus. Dan.
The scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah in the Older Testament, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, and each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This ends today's reading. I, along with so many others, watched the funeral of John Lewis on television. It was held at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, the same church that Martin Luther King Jr. preached at. I didn't listen to all of it, it was almost four hours, but I did catch several of the speakers. Former Presidents George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama all spoke. President Jimmy Carter, unable to attend, wrote a note that was shared. There were several others that I will have to listen to after I write and preach this sermon. I so appreciated the words that I did hear. George W. Bush summarized his life well. He said, From Troy to the sit-ins of Nashville, to the Freedom Rides, to the March on Washington, from Freedom Summer to Selma, John Lewis always looked outward, not inward. He always believed in preaching the gospel in word and deed, insisting that hate and fear had to be answered with love and hope. Bush likened John Lewis to the prophet Isaiah, the prophet that we heard about this morning. When God asks who they can send to share God's word, Isaiah says, send me, here I am. John Lewis, reliant on his faith and his conviction of the truth, said the same, here I am, send me. Bush continued, John Lewis heard that call a long time ago in segregated Alabama, and he took up the work of the Lord through all his days. His lesson to all of us is that we must all keep ourselves open to hearing the call of love, the call of service, the call to sacrifice for others. Over and over again, John Lewis put himself out there regardless of the danger of his own life. Over the many decades that he fought for justice, he was physically abused by the police. He was arrested multiple times, yet he was convinced that he was in the right, and he wanted the rest of us to come along and join in the fight for freedom so that our nation would be an even better place to live and work and play. And he didn't do it by belittling or tearing down others. He did it by speaking the truth with love. So many things were said about John Lewis. I imagine that so many things remain to be said. Words that will inspire us to continue the work that he began so long ago. With all that has happened this summer since the death of George Floyd, it isn't hard to see that there remains much work to be done. There have been so many who have spoken so well of John Lewis's legacy. He knew he was dying. 
dying, and so he wrote one last letter to be released on the day of his funeral, which was this past Thursday. In recognition of his life's work, I want to share his words. John Lewis answered God's call. As we hear his last words, I invite you to consider how you too respond to God's call. There will never be another John Lewis, yet that doesn't mean that we too can make a difference in our communities and in the nation and in the world in which we live. And we can follow in his footsteps of working toward justice insisting that hate and fear has to be answered with love and hope. With God's help, John Lewis was able to accomplish much. With God's help, we can do the same. These are his last words. While my time here now has come to an end, I want you to know that in the last days and hours of my life, you have inspired me. You filled me with hope about the next chapter of the great American story when you used your power to make a difference in our society. Millions of people motivated simply by human compassion laid down the burdens of division. Around the country and around the world you set aside class, race, age, language, and nationality to demand respect for human dignity. That is why I had to visit Black Lives Matter Plaza in Washington, though I was admitted to the hospital the following day. I just had to see and feel it for myself that after many years of silent witness, the truth is still marching on. Emmett Till was my George Floyd he was my Rayshard Brooks, Sandra Bland, and Breonna Taylor. He was 14 when he was killed, and I was only 15 years old at that time. I will never, ever forget the moment when it became so clear that he could have easily been me. In those days, fear constrained us like an imaginary prison, and troubling thoughts of potential brutality committed for no understandable reason were the bars. Though I was surrounded by two loving parents, plenty of brothers and sisters and cousins, their love could not protect me from the unholy oppression waiting just outside that family circle. Unchecked, unrestrained violence and government-sanctioned terror had the power to turn a simple stroll to the store for some Skittles or an innocent morning jog down a loathsome country road into a nightmare. If we are to survive as one unified nation, we must discover what so readily takes root in our hearts that could rob Mother Emanuel Church in South Carolina of her brightest and best, shoot unwitting concert goers in Las Vegas, and choke to death the hopes and dreams of a gifted violinist like Elijah McLean. Like so many young people today, I was searching for a way out, or some might say a way in. And then I heard the voice of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on an old radio. He was talking about the philosophy and discipline of nonviolence. He said we are all complicit when we tolerate injustice. He said it is not enough to say it will get better by and by. He said each of us has a moral obligation to stand up to speak up and to speak out. When you see something that is not right, you must say something. You must do something. Democracy is not a state. It is an act. And each generation must do its part to help build up what we call the beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself. Ordinary people with extraordinary vision can redeem the soul of America by getting in what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. Voting and participating in the democratic process are key. The vote is the most powerful nonviolent change agent you have in a democratic society. You must use it because it is not guaranteed. You could lose it. 
You must also study and learn the lessons of history because humanity has been involved in this soul-wrenching existential struggle for a very long time. People on every continent have stood in your shoes through decades and centuries before you. The truth does not change, and that is why the answers worked out long ago can help you find solutions to the challenges of our time. Continue to build union between movements stretching across the globe because we must put away our willingness to profit from the exploitation of others. Though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and to stand up for what you truly believe. In my life, I have done all I can to demonstrate the way of peace, the way of love and nonviolence that is the more excellent way. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. When historians pick up their pens to write the story of the 21st century, let them say that it was your generation who laid down the heavy burdens of hate at last, and that peace finally triumphed over violence, aggression, and war. So I say to you, walk with the wind, brothers and sisters, and let the spirit of peace and the power of everlasting love be your guide. Rest in peace, John Lewis. Well done and good and faithful servant. We give thanks for your life and your work on this earth. We offer not only the fruits of our financial resources, but we offer our lives as well. May our offerings bring God's light and love and word to those who need it most. Amen. Let us for a moment quiet our hearts and minds as we lift up those for whom we pray for the most up to God. We will join together then in a pastoral prayer after a moment of silence. Holy God, we thank you for hearing all our prayers, those named aloud and those whispered only to you in the quiet of our hearts. We give thanks that you hear all our prayers, know all our worries and uncertainties and fears, and that you carry our burdens with and for us each and every day. We continue to pray for those we know and love, those who are in need of strength or healing or wisdom or peace or employment, or safety, or comfort. We pray for all those we do not know who are also in need. Help us to be your hands and feet in this world of ours. Help us to live our lives so that others may know us by our love. We give thanks for the witness of John Lewis and his life. May we too answer God's call to be God's hands and God's feet in this place. We pray for our nation still in the grips of COVID-19 every day. More and more we're seeing infection rates rise and death totals rise. Let us be convinced to do what we need to do for the sake of us all. Even when inconvenient, even when uncomfortable, even when we are tired of doing so. When we are frustrated, grant us patience. When we are tired, grant us rest. We also pray for our world where there is so much unrest, so little peace, so much need. Empower us to be your hands and feet in this world of ours. We pray for the leaders of this nation and this world that they make decisions that benefit all people and not just some. 
that they be open to the cries of all their people and work toward peace. Remind us each and every day to offer you thanks. Thanks for the many blessings in our lives, the gift of life and breath, the gift of one another, the gift of food and shelter, the gift of your love. Help us to lean into you and one another in the days yet to come. Help us to trust that you are with us and that we truly dwell in your house forever. Hear all these prayers spoken and unspoken and hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll continue this morning with Holy Communion. Friends, we have gathered together around our many tables, trusting that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God is building a great table one that transcends the distance between us. I invite you to hear Christ's invitation to his table of abundance. May we, those who gather around Christ's spiritual table, recognize him in this meal that unites us in Christ and with one another. But before we come to this table, let us confess our sins before God and receive the gift of forgiveness once again so that we might come to Christ's table unburdened and cleansed of sin. I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us and lead us into new life once again. I invite you now to a time of silent confession. these words of assurance that when we confess our sin before God, God does indeed forgive us of sin and invites us to live life anew. Friends, believe the gospel that in Christ we are forgiven. This is good news indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. God of life and all creatures, from the first day to this day you have showered us with gifts of mercy and grace. From the first day to this day, you have sent us signs and wonders, prophets and dreamers to call us to yourself and offer us your grace. Healing for our brokenness, release from our pain, calm for mental stress, peace for soul grief and regret, pardon to remedy our sin and justice to make life whole and glad. Thanks and praise to you for all your gifts. And most of all, for Jesus, our wounded, risen brother and friend. He abides with us here in mystery, as he abided that last night amongst his friends. From his safe and holy hands, you give us this, our daily bread, his body surrendered for us. From his safe and holy hands, we also now receive this brimming cup, this life poured out for us. We remember him now as he told us to do whenever we break his bread and drink his cup at our tables. As we take him to ourselves in this time of illness and fear, we remember before you the people we love, the enemies we do not love, and all who suffer in this world, the frail and falling sparrows on whom your eye is fixed. By the grace and power of the Spirit, let all who share this bread and cup be one in Christ. No matter where we are, near or far, together or apart, one in heart and purpose, one in love and service, one in fearless witness to new heavens and a new earth, that joyous realm to come, whereby your promise there will be no sickness and dying, 
No tears and grieving, but only joy, only life, only justice, only you. All praise and thanks to you, God of all life, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in a prayer of consecrating the bread and the cup. We are one body, one bread, one cup of blessing. Though we are many throughout the earth and this church community, we are scattered. We are one in Christ. In your many kitchens and living rooms, rest your hands lightly upon these elements which we set aside today to be a sacrament. And let us ask God's blessing on them. Gentle Redeemer, there is no lockdown on your blessing, no quarantine on grace. Send your spirit of life and love, power and blessing upon every table where your child shelters in place, that this bread may be broken and gathered in love, and this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us, that we may live in you. Breathe in us, that we may breathe in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to take your piece of bread and eat it in remembrance of Christ, who offers to all the bread of life. And I invite you to take a drink of whatever you have with you, and drink it in remembrance of Christ, who offers to all the cup of blessing. Let us pray in thanksgiving for this meal of grace, rejoicing that by the very method of our worship, we have embodied the truth that Christ's love is not limited by buildings made with human hands, nor contained in human ceremonies, but flows as free as the Spirit in all places. Spirit of Christ, you have blessed our tables and our lives. May the eating of this bread give us courage to speak faith and act love, not only in church sanctuaries, but in your precious world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope, even in the midst of a pandemic. Wrap your hopeful presence around all whose bodies, spirits, and hearts need healing. And let us become your compassion and safe refuge. Amen. Together, let us join our voices in the closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. Dan.
lives witness to Christ's love. Let your words bring reconciliation. Let your thoughts be of peace. Let your touch bring healing. Let your actions count for justice. Be a sign of hope and a beacon of joy. Go and may God's blessing go with you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you peace this day and forevermore. And let us all together say, Amen. God's peace be with you.